Hey everyone, welcome back to POA for you. My name is Leroy and today we're gonna do the last installment of this question 2019 O Levels POA Paper 2 Question 1. Um, in the previous two installments, I've showed you three very simple steps on how to prepare for this type of questions and then I've showed you how those three steps would translate into uh, how a prep preparing the statement of financial performance and today I'm going to show you how to prepare the financial position based on those three simple steps that we've done okay um, now if you have a friend that you think will benefit from this please Share that with your friend. Uh, these are free resources to, and it should reach as many people as possible. Um, and if you have any questions, even a question paper that you want me to try, send them to me. My email is always on the top left-hand corner of the sheets that I work with. Uh, it's at, it's poa for you at gmail.com and or even just send me a question on this channel. Any questions on this question or any questions anywhere. All right, so let's get right into it for today. Okay, so this is where we left off, right? Uh, we have done the statement of financial performance and uh, determined that there is a profit of 6899. Nine, nine. Um, I'm going to put a B here, right? Because this B would indicate that this number would flow into part B of the uh, question, which is the statement of financial position. Then I'm going to copy this whole thing and I'm going to put it below. Right, I'm going to put it below. Now, if you guys have not watched part one and part two of this uh, video, or, um, please go back to my YouTube channel to watch part one and part two of this, right? Because that's important where I show you step by step how I prepare, you know, the stuff that uh, you're seeing on the screen. Okay, so now we're preparing the statement of financial position. It's a standard template in terms of format that you need to know. All right, and you can get these formats uh, from the uh, syllabus outline. It's in the last page of the syllabus outline. Let me just show it to you. So this is a syllabus outline. You guys may have seen this uh, in your um, and uh, in in school or anywhere. So it's syllabus seven zero eight seven. Uh, ordinary level so if you go right away right down to the syllabus you know there's a lot of description on what's included in the syllabus but what's really important is what is also important yeah uh, is the formats of your balance sheet and uh, your statement of financial position and statement of financial performance so here they tell you that uh, for sole proprietor statement of financial position should be this where you show your non-current assets in this format then uh, it's always cost accumulated depreciation and net book value and then current assets and then owners uh, equities and liabilities where you have owners equity non-current liabilities and current liabilities so that's the format you should know all right and then of course uh digressing a bit they have uh, leisure accounts uh, they have a statement of financial position and performance for trading business as well as non-trading business right as well as service business so those are a few things that you need to uh, understand all right so let's go back to where uh, this question so this format mirrors the format that we've seen earlier and now let's start plotting this right so we transfer all the b's into this part right now starting with motor vehicles and then the cost uh, take the original amount 62,000 because there's no new amount but accumulated depreciation, there's a new amount. So we take this number, 30,256, and then we calculate net book value, which is cost less accumulated depreciation. I'm gonna take this two off because I've just transferred them over. And then we go back, go down, inventory. Inventory, I know it's a current asset. So inventory is 10245. Cash at bank is next, cash at bank is uh how much is it uh 5041 because there's no new amount so that's fine i'm going to take this two off so that's done next uh trade receivables uh, i'm going to put trade receivables and that is uh that's a new amount right 15290 so don't forget to put the new amount and trade receivables whenever we put trade receivables we always look out for allowance for impairment on trade receivables so that's what i'm going to transfer as well because those two always go together right allowance for impairment of tr 
right? And the new amount is 5.45, right? Then I'm going to calculate the trade receivables less this allowance, which is this amount. And let's see, payables go to the liability section, okay? So payables go to the liabilities, trade payables. Uh, trade payables liability will be, how much is that? Uh, 9815, okay, good. Um, so now we have these two drawings and capital left. Okay, so uh, that goes under owner's equity and then it goes capital, which is the beginning. This is 57911 um, plus less drawings, yeah? Less drawings, which is the new amount, 9050. Okay, I'm going to take all these out. And then what do we add here? Yes. You're right, you add the profits for the year. So what is the profits for the year? Let's go back down. It's 6899. So I'm going to mark this as done as well. This B, 6899. And I'm going to bring it up here, 6899. I'm going to take this. Whoops, I'm going to take this. Copy this. And I'm going to call out my final equity number, which is this value. 57911, which is the beginning capital, less the drawings, right? Plus profits for the year. That's your capital for the end of the year. And then, now all these are done, right? I'm going down to the journal entries to see whether there's any more Bs for us to reflect. Ah, plenty of Bs. So the first one is wages and salaries payable. So I'm going to put it on my current liability. Mm, wages and salaries payables. And that's one, two, five, zero. I'm going to mark this as done. Then uh, prepaid rent, 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 rent. That's a, mm, so I've got to put it here, prepaid rent. Uh, I'm going to reflect this number for 800. I'm going to mark this B as done too. Then we got commission income receivable. That's an asset. All right, and it's debit to that as well. Then we're going to put the value as 250. And I'm going to mark this as done. All right, getting there, getting there. All right, and the last one, office equipment and other payables. Office equipment is a non-current asset. So I'm going to put here office equipment. And the cost of that is 350. All right, I'm going to put it there. And then if you recall, the accumulated depreciation should be zero because in the additional information, it says no depreciation to be charged on the computer. So it would be zero and the net book value would be 350, right? Okay. Uh, then I'll calculate my total non-current assets too. And then uh, that's done. Okay. And other payables is the last one. Uh, here are the payables. Okay. And that's 350. Okay. And that is done. Now that is all done. I'm going to sum up all the stuff. I'm going to sum up my current assets. I'm going to add my current assets plus my current life, uh, non current assets to get my total assets on one leg of the. Uh, balance sheet. I'm going to add up all my current liabilities and then I'm going to sum up my current liabilities with my capital and we have a balanced balance sheet so that's uh, always a good sign um, and that is the final answer that I have prepared for you guys. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Um, now uh, it, always remember these three steps are so important step one you know you got to make sure that you recognize the trial balance um, items whether they are related to the statement of financial performance or statement of financial position and always remember that you know the revenues expenses and income they will always go to the statement of financial performance and that's 
normally part A of this question, right? And uh, uh, things like assets, liabilities, and capital or equity items, and including drawings, these are considered uh, items relating to equity, would go to part B, which is a statement of financial position, right? So that's step one. Step two, prepare the journal entries for this additional information. And then, you know, step three is to see how these journal entries would flow to the original trial balance to update certain numbers or it may have new accounts that are created which you need to bring into the statement of financial position or financial performance now give this uh, a try yourself right and these kind of questions once you get it it will be so addictive but you need to give it a try step by step try those first three steps and then see whether you come to the same conclusion as i do if you don't re-watch this video if you don't understand ask me the questions right feel free to reach out to me this is uh, something that uh, i want you to have as an access as your learning resource so please uh, don't be shy uh, if you think that a friend may enjoy this as well recommend this to a friend give it a like a thumbs up if you like it and remember to subscribe this channel uh, to kind of get notification on new content but you got to turn on the notification bell all right all right uh, it's been enjoyable for me take care for now guys